President Sister Kawe, members of the Brigham Young University Hawaii faculty and students, friends and neighbors, aloha, aloha. and hafade. Today is a full circle moment for me. Many years ago, I sat in your seats listening to the campus devotional speakers, hoping that they would have something to say that would be of benefit for me during those important days in my young adult life. Today, I feel that responsibility towards you. I pray that my message may be spoken and received through the Holy Ghost. Recently, we were visiting in a ward in the Los Gatos, California area, as we've been recently, looking to buy a home in San Jose. I was deeply moved by a talk given by one of the state presidency members, and with his permission, I share part of that talk. He took some of his information from the San Jose Mercury News article titled, why Japan's 7.6 quake wasn't Turkey's tragedy all over again. In February 2023, a large 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck Turkey. Nearly 60,000 people were killed. Many of the apartment buildings collapsed, trapping the residents and requiring many emergency workers to dig out those buried under the rubble. You will probably remember seeing the media reports on this devastating event over several weeks. In contrast, almost a year later, on January 1st, 2024, a 7.6 magnitude earthquake rocked Japan. Their total fatalities were about 200. That is only one third of a percent of Turkey's fatalities. How were the numbers of losses so different between the two countries and their earthquakes? Obviously, differences in geography, economics, population, culture, and politics contributed to the different outcomes, and it is hard to make a perfect contrast. With that said, the mathematical difference is still staggering. The main contributing factor to the reduced destruction of the earthquake in Japan comes down to preparedness. Japan has had a long history of earthquakes. In 1923, Tokyo was destroyed by a 7.9 quake that resulted in 100,000 fatalities. Within one year, the Japanese government started creating its first building code for earthquake-resistant construction. They continued over many, many years to upgrade and improve these standards as technology progressed. Japan made seismic safety a priority that is considered the most stringent in the world today. On the other hand, many of Turkey's casualties occurred in buildings that were built with substandard materials. The Turkish government had failed to enforce earthquake-resistant building codes, and it also provided construction exemptions for a fee. This allowed structures to be built without required safety standards and certificates. One cultural difference noticed in the article is, quote, in Japan, there's a sense that community matters more than the individual, even if it costs more money, end of quote. These countries' two different approaches for a long-term goal is a great lesson for us in our lives. In the October 2023 General Conference, President Russell M. Nelson said, quote, in my first message as president of the church, I encouraged you to begin with the end in mind, end of quote. Japan did this when they decided to make seismic safety a priority. They did not want to end up with mass casualties due to a lack of preparedness, they cared about their whole community versus the gain of only one. I am sure this was a more expensive route as they put their fiscal resources towards better technology, materials, standards, and enforcement for their buildings. They persisted year after year and maintained their standards even though it was financially more costly. Unfortunately, Turkey did not maintain their seismic building standards as they allowed exemptions to those standards through payments or fees to select individuals. This lack of seeing the end result became a very costly reality for the many, while a few benefited in the short term. President Nelson continues, quote, begin with the end in mind. 
This means making the celestial kingdom your eternal goal and then carefully considering where each of your decisions while here on earth will place you in the next world, end of quote. The decisions he refers to are about the choices you are making every day. Some are bigger than others or have a greater impact on your goal. So we also need to be choosing with the end in mind. President Nelson states, quote, when you make choices, I invite you to take the long view, an eternal view. Put Jesus Christ first because your eternal life is dependent upon your faith in him and in his atonement. It is also dependent upon your obedience to his laws. Obedience paves the way for a joyful life for you today and a grand eternal reward tomorrow, end of quote. When we choose the right, we are being obedient. For many years, I have had this quote by President Ezra Taft Benson on my refrigerator door where I knew everyone could see it. The greatest test of life is obedience to God. President Nelson warns that, quote, as you focus on thinking celestial, expect to encounter opposition, end of quote. It can be very challenging to stick to the plan. It is possible to become distracted and slowly stray. But if we measure every choice with the end goal in mind, it becomes easier to control where we are in our journey on the path. As we make good choices, we gain even greater control over the opposition we will face, no matter how strong it might be. Like the seismic standards of Japan's buildings, we will not fall, although the quaking may be very strong. We will be able to endure, and even endure well. In 1995, with our two very small children, one of which is with us today, my daughter Alexia, and her two little girls that are our two grandchildren here in Hawaii, Rosie Momi and Barbara Lilia, we set out on a great adventure when my husband accepted a position at the prestigious United States Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland. Little did we know at that time that our lives would be significantly shaped, molded, and impacted by this choice, and that we would serve and work there for 25 years. That choice to move came after the extension of a job opportunity through the Lord and the reassuring feelings from the Holy Ghost that we were supposed to accept that opportunity. As a young patriarch, my husband had adopted a scripture which became our family motto in 3 Nephi chapter 13, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. For over 30 years, we have tried to live by that promise. Our children can often be heard saying, put the Lord first and everything else will fall into place, which is our family's interpretation of 3 Nephi 13.33. As a result of following that motto, we have had wonderful opportunities to grow and serve. My husband has received many awards and accolades for his professional success, as you've heard from President Calway. But his most cherished titles and responsibilities are that of being a disciple of Jesus Christ, a husband, a father, a son, and a brother who puts the Lord first. Ken has served in many callings in the church, with his last one being the Annapolis, Maryland stake president. It was an amazing miracle to watch him go from performing the duties of head coach of the Navy football team to presiding as our stake president. When you put the Lord first, everything else falls into place. When you begin with the end in mind, your choices become the right ones. When you think celestial, you stick to your standards, decision after decision, year after year, and increase your spiritual safety so you can reach your goal. This is who my husband and eternal partner is. He lives the life of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. He puts the Lord first in all that he does. And I pray that today you will feel the stirrings of the Holy Ghost to prompt you to make that same commitment in your life. I promise that you will be forever grateful that you did. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
I brought my own Kleenex, but my dear brothers and sisters, aloha. aloha. I want to thank President Kawi for this great blessing to, to be here today, to come to my hometown. It's a great blessing. I'm grateful for all of his staff. Uh, they've been amazing. I'm grateful for our beautiful prayer by Kayla and our, our music. Thank you so much. I'm grateful to my eternal companion. Um, she's a beautiful mother, a grandmother. Um, it's not hard to be a college head football coach. It's hard to be a college head football coach's wife. Uh, it's a very demanding, a very grueling job, and my wife was amazing. Uh, she basically raised my three kids by herself. Uh, she has transferred that love uh, onto our five granddaughters, and I'm so grateful for her. I just want to also send um, my love out to Kasana Mapu at this time. Just um, with the passing yesterday of her eternal companion and my first cousin, Jackson Mapu. Uh, Jackson had a long history here at BYU Hawaii. He was a softball coach. Uh, he worked in the maintenance department. I don't, know how, I don't know how much work they did. You would see them riding around in their maintenance trucks or carts, and it seemed like all they did was, you know, make jokes and tease people and ride around campus. And anybody who's ever known Jackson had been here. Wouldn't know of his laugh, his unique laugh. And, um, Jackson Manuelo, Lumalanga, Alofato. I love President Russell M. Nelson. He is a wise and humble servant of the Lord. I know and testify that he's the Lord's mouthpiece on earth today. He's given many memorable talks in his time as an apostle, now as prophet. My remarks today have been inspired by his first talk as president of the church in April of 2018, his landmark talk on Revelation. Let me start by sharing a few quotes from his talk. Quote, in coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. My beloved brothers and sisters, I plead with you to increase your spiritual capacity to receive revelation. Close quote. What a powerful prophecy by a prophet. Here's another quote from his talk on Revelation. Quote, one of the things the Spirit has repeatedly impressed upon my mind since my new calling as president of the church is how willing the Lord is to reveal his will, his mind and will. The privilege of receiving revelation is one of the greatest gifts of God to his children. Through the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, the Lord will assist us in all of our righteous pursuits, close quote. President Nelson also shared an experience when he was a physician that the Lord revealed to him through the Holy Ghost how to perform an unprecedented operation and how the Holy Ghost diagrammed the technique in his mind. He then shared other pivotal moments in his life where personal revelation from the Lord through the Holy Ghost blessed him and his family. I love the examples of personal revelations in the scriptures, especially personal revelation of Nephi in the Book of Mormon. Nephi obtaining the plates of brass after two failed attempts to get the brass plates, Nephi went back to Jerusalem. In his words, I was led by the Spirit, not knowing beforehand the things which I should do. Nevertheless, I went forth. As President Henry B. Eyring taught, Nephi was guided by the Spirit minute by minute through the night on the Lord's errand. Nephi building a ship, First Nephi, the voice of the Lord came unto me, saying, Arise, and get thee into the mountain. And it came to pass that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou shalt construct a ship after the manner which I shall show thee, that I may carry thy people across the water. And the Lord did show unto me from time to time what manner I should work the timbers of the ship. Now I, Nephi, did not work the timbers after the manner which is learned by men. Neither did I build the ship after the manner of men, but I did build it after the manner which the Lord 
had shown unto me. Wherefore is not after the manner of men. And I, Nephi, did go into the mount off, and I did pray off unto the Lord. Wherefore the Lord showed unto me great things. Each of us can receive personal revelation specifically for our lives. The Lord will reveal his will to us to guide us, to bless us, because he loves us. Brothers and sisters, I would like to share some experiences from my life where the Lord revealed his will to me through the Holy Ghost. I share these experiences with reverence and the most tender of feelings because of the sacred nature of these ex revelations. These experiences bless me and my family. My prayer is that by sharing these experiences, it will encourage you to seek for the blessings of personal revelation in your life and to truly understand that our Heavenly Father loves you. He loves you so perfectly. He sent his only begotten son. He sends his son, and his son sends the Holy Ghost to guide us, to reveal his will for us, to help us with school, with finding an eternal companion, with finding a career, with our current job, with our families, with our church callings, with trials, with hard times. We can know the will of the Father and the Son in all things through the revelations of the Holy Ghost. Second Nephi 32, For behold, again I say unto you, that if you will enter in by the way and receive the Holy Ghost, it will show you all things what you should do. Life experience number one. In 2007, I was an assistant football coach at the Naval Academy. One day there was a summit for world leaders at the academy. As I looked out the window of my office, I saw several helicopters that were preparing to leave the academy as the summit had concluded. The thought came to me how unique the Naval Academy was and how our students would go out and serve the country throughout the world. And I had this clear and peaceful impression. I would become the head football coach at the Naval Academy. And it wouldn't be because of football, but the Lord would use me as an instrument to help build his kingdom. Up until that point, I had no aspirations to be the head coach. Life for our family could not be going any better. But because of that personal revelation, I started to prepare to be the head coach at the Naval Academy. So during my own free time, I prepared offensive, defensive, special team schemes, plans for recruiting, in-season practices, training sessions, philosophy on player discipline, academics, off-season off schedules, calendars, personnel, and staff proposals. I left no stone unturned. Well, later that year in December, I was recruiting in Seattle, Washington, when I received a call from our athletic director. He told me to get on the next plane back to Annapolis, informing me that our then head coach had just taken another job at another school and that he would like to interview me as a possible candidate for the head coach position at the Naval Academy. I arrived in Annapolis later that evening. The interview lasted several hours. I answered every question. that he had in great detail. Because of the personal revelation that I'd received, months earlier from the Holy Ghost, I was completely prepared for the interview. I was hired that night. The Holy Ghost guided me. Experience number two. In 2019, after 11 seasons as a head coach, I was called as the stake president of the Annapolis, Maryland stake. At first, I wondered if the general authorities were sure as me. Maybe they didn't know my schedule. <laughs> Maybe they didn't know how busy I was. But both general authorities bore their testimony to my wife and I that the Lord had clearly revealed to them individually and collectively that it was me. After that, I was at peace because I knew that they were called of God and the Lord revealed to me that it was his will. On our short ride home after that interview, I was still kind of in shock. 
the thought came to my mind, Lord, how can I do this? How can I be a state president and a division one head football coach at the same time? Then the Lord clearly showed me in a vision. I saw my house. I saw the Naval Academy, and I saw the Stake Center. My house, the Naval Academy, and the Stake Center were all less than five minutes apart from each other. I saw a vision of me leaving our football field, getting changed, and rushing off to the Stake Center for a stake meeting. Brothers and sisters, that exact vision actually happened many times as I served as stake president. 2019, my first season as stake president, was the best season of my career. We finished 11 and two, ranked in the top 25. I thought, wow, this is pretty sweet. Just faithfully serve the Lord, honor your covenants, and everything will be smooth sailing. Well, the next couple of seasons weren't so smooth. We had long seasons. It caused me to be on my knees more in prayer. It caused me to study the scriptures harder. It caused me to plead more with the Lord for help. The trials of these three seasons caused me to be close to the Lord, and it allowed me to hear his voice. I believe it helped me receive clear guidance from the Lord on how to lead our stake during the turbulent times of the pandemic. I also believe the great success of the 2019 season showed me that I could do both be the head coach and stake president, and be successful if that was the Lord's will. The Lord was clearly guiding me. Experience number three. In 2022, we were getting ready to play Air Force. It was a critical, critical game in our season. I fasted and earnestly prayed for heavenly help and guidance, but I didn't receive many revelations about the football game like I had received in so many other games over my career. But before the game at the hotel, I did receive clear revelations as it pertained to our stake on certain matters that had not been clear before. These were matters that our stake presidency has spent years contemplating, pondering, and petitioning the Lord for his will. The Holy Ghost directed me on this matter, stake matter. On the bus ride to the game, I fervently prayed for the Lord's help. I received a powerful but quiet revelation from the Lord telling me, I am here. That gave me great peace, thinking that revelation meant we were going to win. During the game, in the midst of 50,000 screaming fans and us losing, I asked the Lord if he was still there. And again, I heard a still small voice, I am here. That gave me courage to think that we were gonna make a comeback and still win. Well, at the end of the game, when it was obvious that we would not win, I asked again, Lord, are you still there? And again, I heard, yes, I am still here. Even though we lost this critical game, I received guidance on how we were to proceed in matters as it pertained to our stake and his kingdom. After this devastating loss in a critical game of my career, the Holy Ghost in his role as comforter provided me with the comfort that I so desperately needed. Experience number four. Later in 2022, in our game versus Army, as always, I humbly but earnestly petitioned the Lord for help. This was another critical game. People might think it is strange or inappropriate to ask the Lord for help for a football game. But for me, this was more than a football game. This was my life. This is what I did for a living. This is how I supported my family. These were more than football games for me and my family. I was pleading with the Lord for help for my job. I was seeking his guidance. The livelihood of my family and many other families were at stake. One night during the week of the game, I was awakened by a dream. For me, it was a nightmare. In a dream, I had a vision. And in this vision, I saw the army sideline storm the field in celebration. I woke up and pleaded with the Lord, please no. I've given 25 years of my life to build this program. I'm doing everything you ask of me. 
I'm honoring all of my covenants. I'm faithfully serving as your state president. Lord, please know. Then the impression came to my mind, lovest thou this more than me? In my mind, I responded, Lord, thou knowest I love thee more than this, but please know. The game was close, as army games normally are. Early in the game, I received a clear inspiration to call it play that we never even practiced that entire week. I was inspired to put in a player who wasn't playing at the time. These clear, distinct impressions have happened several times during my career, and they were always right and always had positive results. Well, the, the play worked perfectly. The player we put in for the game ran untouched 75 yards for a touchdown. As I ran down the sidelines, I said to myself, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. And then I heard a voice telling me, I am here. Again, thinking that meant we were going to win. Things looked promising. We were going in for the go-ahead touchdown in double overtime, but we fumbled the ball inches before the goal line. Army then kicked the winning game, the winning field goal. And then their entire sidelines stormed the field in celebration. It was the exact same scene that I saw in my dream. As devastating as the loss was, I was comforted again because the Lord had already shown me earlier that week that we wouldn't win. I was also comforted by the perfect play call, knowing the Lord hadn't totally abandoned me. He was still with me. I was fired immediately after the game in the locker room. My wife and I decided that it was best for us uh, that we left Annapolis and move closer to family. Thus, I would have to be released as state president. As I met with the new state president, a wonderful man, he told me that as he was watching the Army-Navy game on TV, that as soon as we fumbled the ball at the end of the game, he received personal revelation that he was going to be called as the next state president. It was a tender mercy from the Lord for both of us to help us both recognize and prepare ourselves for the will of the Lord. So how do we receive the constant influence of the Holy Ghost? Each week, as we partake of the sacrament and renew our covenants with the Lord, we learn and are reminded through the sacrament prayers exactly what we need to do to always have his spirit to be with us. O oh God, the eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. So one, we eat the bread in remembrance of the body of the Son. We drink the water in remembrance of the blood of the Son, which was shed for us, so first, we remember the atonement of Jesus Christ. Two, we witness to our Heavenly Father that we will take upon us the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. Three, we witness to our Heavenly Father that we will always remember Him, Jesus Christ. Four, we witness to our Heavenly Father that we will keep His commandments, which He, Jesus Christ, has given us. And then our Heavenly Father covenants that we may always have his spirit to be with us. Do you see a common theme? The common theme is clearly Jesus Christ. Everything points to the Savior. The way to have the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost is the Savior, Jesus Christ. Second Nephi 32, angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost, wherefore they speak the words of Christ. In the New Testament we read, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. In the Book of Mormon we read, Yea, come unto Christ and be perfected in him, and deny yourself of all ungodliness. And if ye shall deny yourself of all ungodliness and the love of God with all your might, mind, and strength, then is his grace sufficient for you, 
that by his grace ye may be perfect in Christ. And by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ. Ye can in no wise deny the power of God. And again, if by the grace of God ye are perfect in Christ and deny not his power, then ye are sanctified by, in Christ by the grace of God through the shedding of the blood of Christ, which is the covenant of the Father unto the remission of your sins, that ye become holy without spot. Second Nephi 25, we talk of Christ, we rejoice of Christ in Christ, we preach of Christ, and we prophesy of Christ. Jesus is the way. Come unto Christ and be perfected in him. When we come unto his Son, then the Father sends us the Holy Ghost. Simply stated, the more we come unto Christ, the more we have the companionship of the Holy Ghost. Once we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands, after we are baptized, we then can have the constant companionship of the Holy Ghost through the constant companionship of Jesus Christ. The main role of the Holy Ghost is to testify of the Savior that he is the only begotten Son of God. As we remember Jesus' atoning sacrifice, remember to take upon us his name, always remember him and keep his commandments, we will always have his Spirit, the Holy Ghost, to be with us. In closing, I'd like to share an experience of a dear friend who served as a stake president of a neighboring stake. One year, we had a regional training for stake presidents with Elder Quentin L. Cook. Me and my dear friend both arrived early for the meeting. We were very excited about this training with Elder Cook. As we waited for our meeting to start, somehow we got into the discussion how we were called as stake presidents. He told me that the Lord revealed to him that he was going to be stake president while he was still serving as a bishop. He told his family about these promptings. Well, eventually there was a reorganization of the stake presidency, but he wasn't called. He was a bit perplexed and wondered why he had received those promptings. Later on, as he was serving as the ward young men's president, there was another change in the stake presidency. And again, he had those same promptings that he was going to be the stake president. But this time, he re reluctantly told his wife about the promptings, and she was the only person he told. A ward young men's president normally does not get an interview with the general authority assigned to seek the Lord's will on who will be the next stake president. But there was a mix-up in the paperwork, and they accidentally scheduled an interview for my friend. The general authority told the then stake president that it was okay and that they would still give my friend an interview. Well, this time he was called as stake president. He told me that it was a tender mercy from the Lord because the Lord knew him. The Lord knew that he needed time. He needed time to digest things. The Lord was mindful of him personally as the Lord prepared this great brother to serve as stake president. The Lord's promptings and revelations may not always come in the time or in the way that we expect, but if we are worthy, they always come in the best time and in the best way for us because our Heavenly Father is all-knowing and all-powerful, but most importantly, His divine love is perfect and pure. Brothers and sisters, I add my witness that our spiritual survival requires the guiding, directing, comforting, and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. And through the manifestations of the Holy Ghost, the Lord will assist us in all of our righteous pursuits. I testify that the Holy Ghost comes to us through and because of Jesus Christ. I know that he is the only begotten Son of God. I know that he is the Savior and Redeemer of the world. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is his church. I know that BYU Hawaii is one of his schools, and I know that he loves you. And because of that love, he has gathered you from around the world to this chosen land of Laie to learn of him, to receive personal revelation from him, and to build his kingdom. In his name, even Jesus Christ, amen.